all yours but he it sounds like sawyer because of my accent so sawyers it is but a guy uh, as you just touched on robert fitzpatrick senior a guy um who has has made starts he has been consistent as far as getting uh finishing the race a lot of these is a battle of attrition early on in the season so the fact that Robert Fitzpatrick is sitting in a playoff spot uh, and he's sitting in the top 10 really shows I mean if you can see on your SDK he's 15 spots up from where he started so if he's doing anything he's quiet and he's moving up the pack he has been impressive so far expecting that first green flag pit stop here Tom I think that window is probably going to open up somewhere between I would say lap 60 65 and 70 or no I think more like I would say 70 lap 70 would probably be a, a, a decent mark or maybe 69 nice but yeah maybe lap 69 yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of guys put on that lap specifically we'll have to see how they decide <laughs> to go about it but here we go the pace car is going to pull back off 52 of 100 completed Mike DeWalt first time on the green, green. front row alongside Ethan Burrell green flags back in the year 20 does not get a good start We are back, and wow, looks like green flag racing indeed. Burrell and Cutlip, one and two. Perrin Huggins in third. DeWalt and fourth, Sean Anderson in fifth. There was almost some contact there. So it was getting down to the front. Now back, back at it with the three wide action. Somehow, some way, the 91. But Tyler Curley is still finding a way to pass guys. Of course, he's not on the lead lap. And we got one up in the wall again. Almost comes back down in traffic now. Oh, this I see it. Pile us up again. Oh, and it looks like that Yellow was Lawrence. Let's get a replay on that one. That is unfortunate. As we just, as soon as you mentioned it, I clicked over and found him. Gets out of the tunnel. Well, let's see how they get through the freaking tunnel turn first. But it looks like Trey Holmes kind of pushing the issue as we're looking back on my screen. Menchaca's already in the wall. Holmes comes down, kind of gets a little sideways. Menchaca looks like a combination of Menchaca, Holmes, and Lawrence. Yeah, Michael tried to save it, but you can see he just got a little bit behind on his steering. And once they started ping-ponging off of each other, it was just kind of over. I guess the good news is it only took out one car somehow. That's a hard thing to do here at Pocono when you wreck in the middle of the straightaway with a lot of guys behind you. But yeah, and that's crazy to believe. Yeah, Menchaca just goes too hard in the paint into the tunnel turn. Keeps it together for the most part, but then bumps into Lawrence. Collateral damage. Great heads up awareness from Brandon Smith to check up at the right moment or else he could have ate that as well. And then we have more crashing. Looks like afterwards, I don't know if you saw that between Robert Fitzpatrick Sr. and Keaton Sawyers as a caution was coming out, but we're going to catch that right now and see what happened. Looks like they were coming out of two. Looks like Fitzpatrick just goes too hard and takes Keaton with him. Oh, that's sad. Man, you can see guys right Oh, and then he hits him again. Oh, my God. Oh, Kicking a man while he's down. Jeez Louise. I got to see that one more time. That was, I don't know what to think. You're going to have some heated tempers moving on the rest of the season from what I've seen from some of these guys tonight. My goodness. Bad blood has been created if there ever was. Yeah, Fitzpatrick goes way too hard. They both bounce off the wall. Fitzpatrick stops and then tries to go forward and then hits him again. Ooh, there might be some talk in the Gears Cup Series trailer or hauler after this one. You know, I think some of these racks that we're seeing a little bit more towards the back is, I guess maybe the urgency, desperation, whatever you want to call it, setting in here. We talk about each restart. You never know if it could be your last one. And guys, they know how important that track position is. And sometimes, you know, it's just a mix. You get that mix in the back. You got guys that have been in the front early. They feel like they have a car to win. They're trying to get back up there. You got, you got guys that haven't been at front all night. They know this is their chance. They're going for it. And a lot of times things just don't play out well. But tonight, it has seemed like that tunnel turn has really been the thing that's haunted guys the most. What do you think, Tom? Yeah, I mean, it, it all depends. <laughs> I'm sorry, I got a little distracted here. But I, I don't think, you know, tonight, if you get some bad luck, that you're, that you're dead in the water. Like it was Talladega or Daytona. 
I would say that you're, you're done if you get a little damage on your car. But I, I think with Keaton, in Keaton's aspect, I think he's going to be okay. Um, but, again, we have, what, 45 laps to go? Is that is that it, 45? It's going to be 45 when we yeah. hit this next lap right here. Still plenty of time. I mean, that's the total length of our first two stages. And these guys still not able to get in a rhythm. It always seems like you got to maybe put 10 laps or so at least under your belt if we're going to start getting back into a rhythm. Now, one thing I didn't get to notice has been if track temp or weather in general has been changing. It looks like wind is varying in direction. That's certainly not hurting anybody. Now, track temp, usually we talk about that being a factor, but I don't think that's been the case here tonight. Currently seeing it 83 degrees. So nobody should have a handling issue in that sense. And the looseness that we saw out of turn three earlier seems to have gotten better as well. Big shout out to Militia subscribing for six months to the channel. That's amazing. That is my first ever subscriber. So Jonathan Militia didn't make the race tonight, but was able to tune in, hang out. Thank you, Militia, for the sub. One of my first subscribers ever. Thank you. Ethan Burrell and John Couplet on the front row with Mike DeWalt and Perrin Huggins on the second one. Nate Fuller and Matthew Weeks in the third row. Nick Wood, Mount Albert, row four. John Howard and Jeremy Beal, row five. And Josh Cole and Tyler Curry, Curley, row six. As they're going to change in and out here. So we're getting set to go back to green flag racing. This, this kind of continues to make the pitch strategy a little bit more and more interesting. If we get another caution here, probably about five to ten laps or so from now, then it may turn into that one-stop strategy. Again, still expecting green flag stop. But right now, we got to see if we can put a handful of laps or so under our belt and get some green flag laps going. The 37, though, has looked really good. The 28s looked good all night as well. Perrin Huggins, but Mike DeWalt just continues to find himself in the right place at the right time and consistent enough to keep himself out of trouble as well. I mean, the leaders, we talk about that they've been the fastest, but they get a little too aggressive, maybe get into each other, and Mike DeWalt, he is ready to strike easily with the top five car tonight, maybe even top three in a shot at winning this thing. Absolutely. As we are getting ready to go back green flag racing into turn three, they go. Let's take a look at your pick. Looks like Cody Johnson right around at 21st. He's still on the lead lap, so that is good. Pace car lights are off. Hitting pit lane, they go. Ethan Burrell, John Cutler's going to lead it green off, flag. and here we go. Restart, green, green, green for the Gears Cup Series Dundee's 250. 44 laps to go here at Pocono. This time they're going to try to fan out a little bit. We have one thinking about through out of the middle. Things better as they get down, though, the turn one. This time, 37 gets another good jump on the restart, allows him to get clear through turn one. Mike DeWalt on the outside, he's going to tuck in line. We had a couple tag the wall. Everybody keeps it straight, though, as we work down the short shoot into the tunnel turn. Let's give the people what they want, Austin. Let's do our first loose and loud segment of the evening. Hope you can, are ready to turn it up to a level, as Michael Scott would say. Loose and loud, coming at you.
will bring you back in here. Looks like there was a caution that needed to call. We're actually replaying it now between Nate Fuller and Perrin Huggins. And it looks like Huggins just straight up turned him. Just straight up turned him. We've had that a couple Let's times back. tonight, Tom. Well, this is uh, uh, this is gonna probably gonna be a problem. So I mean, it, you know, not even just you know, broadcasting side. This is something we've been really trying to tell our drivers not to do. And these guys already have bad blood and have been warned. Um, so now it's just going to be a point of what really happened. And where do we go from here? Yeah, because yeah, we're... Gotta, I got to say, looking from the chopper cam, it, I don't know if it was so much. It wasn't. It didn't look super intentional, but yeah, the eight just, maybe he was trying to get a hard side draft. Hard to tell, but yeah, definitely just moving up a little bit too much. And you said those two didn't like each other beforehand. They're really not to like each other now. Big shot into the inside wall here, destroying the left front. Front bumper slides off the rail of the track. That's part of what brought out the caution. But man, Nathan Fuller, who is another guy having a good night, he's going to go to the back here, and we got to hope he's got a fast repair. Yeah, and that, is, that definitely is going to be unnerving for the 24 car. That is unfortunate. All right, guys, heading into pit lane. Get a good shot here towards the end of it. And this is the perfect time. I was just looking at some data there. That's why I went quiet for a second. But yeah, yeah. yeah this is going to put us in that one-stop window now, I believe at least, Tom. We're really, really close to it, especially with these caution laps that we're still going to run. So we took out one green flag stop. We still have one more on the schedule, but things still looking messy. Now, that time it had gotten spread out. I thought we were getting ready to go green for a pretty long ways. Unfortunately, couldn't quite do it. And now I'm starting to think everybody's probably only got one maybe a couple guys that played out strategy two sets of tires left yeah i mean that's really going to come into play here with strategy if uh if they haven't gotten that because you probably need it the 28 though of john cutlip founds himself in the lead quite a few times today he finds himself there now with what's going to be 30 37 to go when we take the green it's looking like matt albert up 30 from where he started I believe that's the biggest mover so far of the night. He finds himself second. Nick Wood third. Nathan Fuller in fourth. Jeremy Beal fifth. It's going to be Kyle Munson in sixth. Ethan Burrell seventh. Josh Cole eighth. Sean Anderson ninth. And how about Matthew Weeks in the 11 rounding out your top 10? Hey, let's see if we can get a driver interview one moment here. Hang on with us here. All right, riding now, or riding, I should say, talking now here with the 91 car of Tyler Curry. Curry got us some trouble here early on, now finds himself back in 12th place and on the lead lap. Tyler, give us a quick little rundown of uh, how frustrating your night has been tonight. It really, honestly, hasn't been that frustrating. I mean, I made a silly mistake early on, used my fashion pair, and then uh, I really don't know what happened yet between me and the eight. Uh, I stopped looking at replay, but I feel yeah. like I got turned. Um, I don't know. I got to look back at the replay. I'm not going to comment on that that much. Sure, sure. But uh, it's been a pretty good night. Just drove to the field like three or four times now. So I'm just looking <laughs> at at least one of the top ten of my first start. So that's all I'm looking for. Well, how many tire sets do you got left? You don't mind me asking. Uh, I got one. I accidentally used my second to last one right there on that last race. Bit, so, yeah. Yeah, that'll happen. That'll happen. Well, good luck to you, man. We'll get you back out there. Since you're gridding up, get back to green flight race. Best of luck to you, Tyler. All right, thank you. All right, and that was the 91 car of Tyler Curley, man who had been in some trouble here tonight, but has done a good job digging himself out of the hole. John Cumlin, Matt Albert, Jeremy Beal, Nick Wood, and Ethan Burrell, your top five, followed by Josh Cole, Sean Anderson, Matthew Weeks, Mike DeWalt, and Trey Holmes rounding out your top ten. That interview just did Tom Boyd. 
He sounded like he had some confidence now, didn't he? Oh, I'm yeah. A little surprised. This thing doesn't look too beat up. I thought we had said that he used his fast repair earlier, but this thing looks pretty cleaned up. I think he I think he used his fast repair early on and then just did the repair and waited it out there over the course of time. So hopefully that's exactly what it is and not some, uh, you know, some cheat or something. <laughs> I, well, I mean, I'm not accused. Uh, no, I just want to put out there. I'm not accusing the man of cheating. I'm not. I'm just. I'm just uh, making a joke. Well, at a track where arrow is so important, that arrow is going to be very important here. And if he can find a way even to finish in the top five, I will be extraordinarily impressed. We'll see what he can do. 63 of 100. Green, green, green. Pace car pulls off. Green flag back in the air. John Cutliffe gets a big jump. It's going to gap the field here by about four car lengths before we even get to the end of the straightaway. And it is getting buck wild behind him. Three and four wide going into turn one. And, and we wreck. have a huge wreck. Yellow flag is out. It could have Nines not involved. gone any worse for Trey Holmes, Lucas Reed, and Sean Anderson, the guy's second in the points race. Guys not minding their P's and Q's and have ended up costing people some position. Let's see. What we can see here. Let's stop it right before chaos starts to ensue. And it looks like the man we just spoke with, Tyler Curry and Brandon Smith, helps push. Oh, looks like he got a little loose. Curly and DeWalt bump into Sean Anderson. Sean Anderson gets a good brunt of that. Holmes gets put up into the wall. Reed's there. Holloway. Take a look at it one more time. Yeah, the four wide just didn't really work out there too well. Of course, the 91 and the 20 being the first two to get together. And Mike Dwalk, who we talked about, stayed out here all night. Tied himself here. And he is, well, he was on a short list of drivers who hadn't had any contact tonight. Of course, he's going to cross himself off that list here in this one. Yeah, and it looks like he was the catalyst of that one on accident. I mean, I don't think it was smart for... Uh for 91 to make it four wide in that turn, and DeWalt really had nowhere to go. Got a, looks like he just got a little twitchy. The points leader got a little twitchy, and then rear-ended. Looks like he'll make it. Sean Anderson should be okay. Not too much damage on that Tire Pros 14 Ford Mustang. And we say that four wide is, it's very doable here, poking around. I mean, we know on the straight over here, plenty wide enough, but that's all going to funnel down into turn one, probably back into two wide, maybe some three wide, but certainly not four wide. And as they were trying to get that funnel back out, that was when that contact first started and brings out what I believe I'm reading here is our ninth caution. Subtract the two we had scheduled. Seventh caution of the night here. Things are getting a little messy with 40, or excuse me, 30, 35 laps to go here at Pocono. Well, I think, you know, the people have put in practice it's beginning to show. Cream is starting to rise from the from the crop, as it were. But there is just, you know, some guys out there that want to push it. You know, as as people say, you know, you can't you can't win the race in the first lap, but you can sure as hell lose it. Um, and I think coming off of caution, they just I think it's a common denominator in sim racing. I don't know, Austin, if you could back me up on this. But guys have zero patience from the mid to the mid of the field to the back. There's always a couple people that always feel like they need to push the push the limit right on the restart. And I just don't understand the logic that goes into it. I can certainly agree with you on that. I'm used to broadcasting, for the most part, money races. And that is all those guys do from drop of the green. They know that there's money on the line. And if there's an issue to force, they're going to force it. But overall, throughout just general series that I've either seen or broadcast, you know, when we get a stint of cautions like this, they just continue to happen. Guys know track is too important. But also, as you noted, the best of the best guys are the ones that find themselves up front now. You got a couple guys mixed in that have had some luck and skill mixed in tonight. But John Cutliff is the perfect example, finds himself in the lead right now. And with this many cautions, I think at this point, you got to start thinking about track position more than strategy. Yeah, absolutely. Track position is is something that is so important at this stage of the race. And not sure what the guys are thinking about there in their heads right now. But again, you know, as late as the race gets, you want to be near, you know, you want to be near the front towards the end of the race. That's the that's key to race, right? So hopefully for these guys, they've got it figured out and they can get back to green flag racing to get a long run here. Uh, I certainly do not want to see another caution. And if we, if we do get another caution, though, in general, again, it's 
that final pit stop, as of right now, we're, we're thinking, the, well, obviously the fuel window is going to open. I'd say to play it safe, we're going to say with probably about 18 to go, maybe 17 just to play it super safe. That's going to be somewhere between lap 82 and 85. So if we get a caution any time after that, it's going to be a no green flag stop kind of race. But the field is shrinking up slowly but surely, Tom. We keep picking them off one by one. Guys that are getting involved in these wrecks either retire from the race or get sent off the lead lap. And right now it looks like there's still 25 cars being scored on your lead lap with Holloway being the last one on it. A couple other guys looking for the lucky dog. But as we get ready to go back to green here, what do you think? Do you either go for the lead here or do you try to play it safe? I honestly am one of those. I'm a lurker. I like to, to hang out towards the end. I don't like to be near the front um, as far as being in the one or two or three position. Um, if it were me, I'd be hanging around the top ten, just kind of just making sure that it's tangible, that I can get up there if it needs to happen towards the end. But, again, that's just a preference I have. Well, according to pre-race chat, it sounded like you were pretty fast here, so I don't know how much I believe that. We catch up in, up here in the booth tonight instead, so we obviously don't get to watch you out on track. But besides the guy that I picked tonight, Cody Johnson, was there a certain driver that you were watching from the drop of the green? The guy that I know that has come into the series and is very hungry is, is I'll just point him out here on camera as well, Elliot Drummond in the middle of the light Ford Mustang in that 29 car. Uh, the kid has been coming out. He's been lights out, winning stages since he's been here. Kind of has been quiet here going into stage three. Uh, but a guy that I would definitely keep my eye on and I would I would formally pick as my winner here tonight if I had to make a pick right now. As a pace car is just about ready to go off, Jeremy Beal is going to lead us off with John Cutlip. And we are back green, green, green for the Gears Cup Series of the Dundies 250. If this one gets off to a cleaner start with 51, thought about going up top. He's going to choose to stay low. You see they're not three and four wide like they were last time. We'll see how it works down. Another good jump. Then the story of the whole second part of the race really is the leader getting clear by a mile down into turn one. The 37 following in suit out. Still side by side. That's going to be the battle for third and fifth. And Trey Holmes and Mike DeWalt moving lanes. So is Tyler Curley. Let's see if everybody gets through the tunnel turn okay. Very bueno by most of the drivers. John Cutlip still holding the lead here. 68 of 100, come to 69 of 100 here. Nice. What we initially thought was going to be one of the pit stops. Not going to be the case so far. But John Cutlip at this point, he is looking to tick off the category of most laps led if he doesn't already have it at this point. Jeremy Peel still hanging around the top five. He's got some work to do, but I'm seeing quite a long single ball line. A couple moves here and there. It looks like the 33 of Brandon Muir is going to jump to the inside. Some contact. Does the 51 keep that out of the wall? He does, Ooh. man. That was a close call for Nick Wood. Does a heck of a job saving it. But now he's going to be under fire from the 43 of Josh Cole. Yeah, and these cars are tricky. These next-gen cars, they get so loose so quick. You bang off each other. You hit off the wall. It's so easy for it to go sideways. Definitely takes some skill to keep these cars straight once you get into a little bit of trouble. Guy who I haven't said, or that we haven't talked about here tonight, the focus back to 43 is Josh Cole. Josh Cole has been here since the Heat five days, most recently joined back up with us when we made the jump to iRacing. He has just come back, he's about a month in. But again, a veteran of this league, racing around with Elliot Drummond and Keaton Sawyers and Nathan Fuller. But he's an eighth, and he's doing a good job so far. Off of turn three there, the 33 Brandon Mayer had some trouble, got down into the grass. Held on, but unfortunately lost quite a few positions. Oh, we oh got a crash. Yellow, yellow, we just yellow. caught it right behind there. Looks like Tyler Curley and DeWalt and Albert Bang. That's what she said. But we're going to back this up and see what the heck just happened. Oh, looks Tyler. Like a, looks like Tyler, Tyler Curley. Curley. Sandwich. Tyler Curley, John Howard, and Cody Johnson do not make a baby. John Howard gets into it. Wow. Man. And unfortunately, the cat who had nine lives just wasted his last one. That's going to be end, the end of Curly's night. We'll back it up and play it again here for you. Johnson really wasn't even involved. He kind of came up on him. Ooh, and then Albert hits Howard. 
DeWall trying to save his car ends up running in to Albert. And Curly just gets a toe. Yeah, it looks like Cody's just getting a little tight. Not quite able to make it work. I think if they're too wide here, they're both able to save it and regroup. Not sure if one of them wasn't aware that they were three wide. But, man, that's a tough break for the 78 again. Kind of minding his own business. But the 91 of Tyler Curley destroying the right side. You can see the suspension just flying around everywhere. Tether's the only thing holding him still on. No hood. And as you said, if he had nine lives, he certainly finished him off right there. And his night is going to be over after that wreck. I don't even think that's optionally repairable. No, he is toast. Well, we have seen our fair share of cautions here tonight, folks. Hopefully, they will clean things up here for the conclusion. As next week, it gets even harder. We are going to be at Sonoma Raceway. And tune in around a similar time of 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central Time. Again, it's going to be the Coors Banquet 100 on July 14th, 2023. And then the final race on July 21st with Austin will we'll be here. It's going to be for the Boot Barn 250 at Legacy Texas Motor Speedway. And we might be at the Tricky Triangle tonight, but I think Sonoma's going to be a lot more tricky next week. I had a broadcast for that, but I've just raced in their general. Well, let's, let me start with this idea. The next gens on a lot of these tracks, this kind of got brought up about the last thing. They have a lot more grip than we ever used to see. In any of the racing series we did on Heat 5, even with the new stock cars, the next gen in general, overall more grip, the bigger tire, and they they handle really well until all of a sudden they don't. You get yeah. slightly loose, these things feel all but impossible to save, and that has been a struggle for a lot of guys tonight. Now, Sonoma, that's definitely not a very high downforce track in these cars. A lot of S's, one of the shorter road courses in all of NASCAR, and it's going to be a struggle. That's one of those tracks where you're either you're on it or you're not, and I would not be surprised if you find somebody at that track that's either a road course specialist or somebody that maybe you haven't seen too much throughout this season kind of surprise everyone come out with a bang and get a win yeah and there's a couple guys in this field with uh with just just naming sonoma there's you know nathan fuller mike dewalt just to name a couple guys that are going to be front runners for that race i'd even say keaton sawyers may be up there as well perrin huggins is going to be another one he's a good road course racer so definitely we'll find out what guys are made of here next week as the road course is looming again john cutliff your leader ethan burrell in second matthew weeks third parent huggins fourth and jeremy beal rounding out your top five and we're probably 10 10 to 13 laps away from that final pit stop here so we will see if these guys have another caution but again that final tire set depends on when you took it if you already took if you only have one tire set left right now i gotta assume you're probably going to take it on that last green flag pit stop now, depending on if we do have another caution, depending on where it falls, actually, maybe more or less instead of another caution, what do you, I was going to say just in general, if we have a green flag stop, do you think there's any strategy in maybe two tires? Yeah, I don't know. I, I remember, I don't know if you read about this, but they're saying taking two tires with the next-gen cars is, is almost like suicide. Uh, they, don't, they don't run well. Um, they tend to be harder to handle. Um, and I think that that's a given when you take two tires. Uh, but apparently for the next-gen cars, for the sim, it's especially tricky to navigate. Yeah, that sounds about right, especially what we've seen tonight on four tires. Guys still getting loose. But the field continuing to get smaller. Either way, front row, John Cutlip and Ethan Burrell. Road two is going to be Matthew Weeks and Perrin Huggins. Jeremy Bill rounding up top five. And Parent Huggins chatting from the race car into the Twitch chat. <laughs> Hopefully you're doing well, Perrin. And Militia in the 43. Militia 43 says a lot of hard racing. Let's just bring him into the booth for a minute. Where did he go? I might have just lost him. Off. We did. I think we did. Hopefully he'll come back. If he joins the broadcast voice chat, that would be great. But we're getting ready to go back. Green flag racing with Jonathan Cutlip and Ethan Burrell. Your front row. Matthew Weeks, Perrin Huggins, row two. Jeremy Beal, Elliot Drummond, row three. Keaton Sawyers, Nate Fuller, row four. Row five is the tail of the Brandons. Brandon Smith and Brandon Meyer. Row six is Tyler Styler and Michael Menchaca. Row 7 is Mike DeWalt and Trey Holmes. Row 8 is Josh Cole and Nick Wood. 
Sean Anderson, Robert Fitzpatrick, Kyle Muntz, they keep jumping around in my SDK, so I'm giving up trying to tell you the rest of the field. But we're getting set for green flag racing as they are coming out of turn three. Let's get it on for the Dundies 250 for the green flag. Cutliff to lead us down in the 28 Ford Mustang Mobile One car. Green flag, green flag. According to effect on the outside, but we are off and away. Jonathan Cutliff, not the perfect start he wanted this time as Ethan Burrell was able to keep up with them. And we are off and away. Back in Did the booth. Get... Sorry, Austin. Looks like we have Jonathan Militia with us here tonight. Jonathan, first of all, thank you for the sub. You are the freaking man for that. But uh, how are you? Yeah. I'm doing all right. A little late to the venue tonight, but I'm here. Yeah, happy to have you in the booth here. I know it sucks not being able to be out on track and competing with the rest of your brethren, uh, but taking the seat from uh, from the, uh, what do you call it, crow's nest. What is, uh, what is your view on tonight's race in a quick summary? A lot of hard racing. I basically started, I came in and started uh, from stage. So, I mean, from my understanding, there wasn't many cautions or anything in the first few stages. So, this, a lot of hard racing, a lot of people have so been patient. But other than that, it's been pretty good. A lot of really entertaining with uh, some of the crashes. Yeah, Tyler Curley uh, finally striking out at the end there. Uh, just got totally killed. <laughs> in that last wreck. Unfortunate for Matt Albert and Mike DeWalt. Um, Chris Lawrence has been another guy that has just been at the wrong place at the wrong time. Uh, the accident between Fuller and Huggins looks like they both have rebounded from that okay. Might have to talk about that later. Um, but good hard racing here so far. As you see, Jeremy Beal, Nathan Fuller battling for sixth. That is our focus right now. Oh, uh, he's we're going to the pits. Oh, and he is going into the pits. That is John Cutliffe pitting, which he could have done that under caution. The size of the pit under green. That's going to open the door for Ethan Burrell and Perrin Huggins. I'm speechless. I'm not oh, sure. Man, that's all strategy right there. That is strategy coming into play. That's my pick for the race. 29, Elliot Truman lurking now. On the outside, going into turn two, the dreaded tunnel turn. Takes over second from Parrott. I gotta be honest though, Tom, I, I think that, that strategy kind of, uh, he's gonna have to bite the bullet on that. I, I'm not sure if maybe he's expecting another early caution here or what, but pitting now, he's gonna have to still make another stop. The rest of these guys are only planning on making one. And that's handed lead over to Ethan Burrell, who, by the way, was just getting ready to knock on the back door. Now that he's got the cleaner, we'll see if he can pull away. Two of the other fastest guys tonight, and Elliot Drummond, Perrin Huggins, they stay side by side down the front stretch. The 29, he's got plenty of damage. Still making up speed, still making it work. And if he can get this position from the eight car, he'll have a shot to get back to lead, which we saw quite a bit in through stage one. Again, as Austin just mentioned, Ethan Burrell, your leader, Elliot Drummond, hanging on on life support to second place as Matthew Weeks and Parrot Huggins are all over him like a fat kid on cake. Ethan Burrell kind of looks like what you expect to see at the Indy cars here. He is really snaking the draft. Not going to be able to do it now. He knows these guys are getting too close. He's going to worry more about defending the line down into the turn, but we're coming to 23 to go. Ben Boyle likes to say the pay window is open, and I always felt like anywhere under 25 to go, it's crunch time, but we still got that pit stop left. And what do you do? Do you pit early or do you pit at the end of this window? I would pit towards the end of the window. because Oh, we have trouble. We have trouble, and that trouble is Nick Wood of the 51. He's around. Let's see if they call a caution. I don't believe so. I think he was going to pit, but ended up spinning out. He's going to get it straight and going to keep it green. And I think if you're Cutlip, you were really hoping you could see a caution off of that right there. But he's not going to get it. Meanwhile, up front, the 37 and the 29 are about to get back into a fierce battle. In fact, just go ahead and throw all your top five under a blanket. They're trying to sort this thing out. And is that the 24 of Nathan Fuller? It is. We saw the big hit he took earlier. Boy, he has rebounded nicely back up inside the top five. He's got Perrin Huggins just in front of him. But these five, they kind of pulled away kind of on an island by themselves. And... Again, you can't see the track map really, but it's almost like two packs, three packs rather, kind of what we're used to seeing at Daytona, Talladega. 
these guys have really gotten separated and this should decrease the likelihood of a caution for the rest of the way. As we have 22 laps to go. As Austin mentioned, Fuller has Perrin Huggins in his sight. Huggins, the man that kind of let him go across his hood a couple cautions ago. We'll see if Nathan Fuller repays the favor. Again, as always, happy to have Jonathan Militia. Oh, already seeing some incident submissions, so that's going to be fun to review later. Yeah, but we'll Step see if... The lead here, Tom. Yes, we do. Elliot Drummond out front yet again in that blue and gold 29 Miller Lite Ford Mustang. And I don't know if you could quite see it from, from there or not, but man, when Ethan Burrell got in the dirty air off the four, he almost, off the three, excuse me, he almost got up to the outside wall, was able to hold on. I thought he'd get a draft, didn't quite get enough, but he took it right back to the inside, down into turn one, trying to get any clean air on the nose. And can he get to the corner panel? That's what it's going to take here if he wants a shot at the 29 down into the tunnel. And it looks like he's losing position here because Matthew Weeks is taking advantage. If the door's open, he's going to take it. Weeks to the inside, not going to be able to pass Drummond. Drummond's going to stay out there at least for another turn. Weeks to the inside again. Going to tuck right back in the line. Burrell and Huggins now battling for third. Burrell's tires may be going away, or maybe he's just trying to save a little something, something for the end. Again, they're going to have to pit at least one more time. When is going to be the key question? Let's go to the Creed, Branton, Blim Cam. And that fuel window should be opening here. Probably two laps, playing it safe for the rest of these guys. Probably about two laps from now, but as you noted, I don't think anybody will necessarily pit at the beginning of it. And, I, oh, man, big block from the 29. He is trying everything to keep Matthew Weeks behind him. He was able to do so this time. But go back to that pit strategy. I think if you pit more towards the end of it, it opens up the options. I know you were saying that two tires doesn't handle good, and I completely believe that. But you figure if we only maybe have five laps or so, you got to wonder, is that time difference worth it or not? We'll yeah. have to find out. But the 37 continues to fade, and he's about to be under fire now from the 24. Let's see what happens. You can see from the blimp cam the the groups that have kind of single filed out. Again, all over the track. Cutlip sits back at 24th. Again, pitch he's strategies. For a caution. Well, he's about to go a lap down in a couple laps if he is not careful. Mike DeWalt, good, good job on this, you know, he's got that front end damage, of course, definitely not helping his case, but he's still sticking inside the top 10, he sits in ninth, up four from where he started, and Brandon Mier, about the 33, we saw him almost spin on that last run, caution came out, so he got his track position back, and he's taking advantage in seventh of 21 from where he started, and then as we talked about, Nathan Fuller still trying to get around the 37 before he would have to contend with the eight of Perrin Huggins, and when you said it, it was already a thought in my mind. Actually, I'm going to hold that thought because we got another battle for the lead here. The 11, Matthew Weeks, he's tried and tried. He's going to try again here. But the 29 has been so strong on the outside, and he's going to hold him off again. I mean, consistency and how smooth you are. You're not using up too much of that tire. As you saw, the 29 got a little loose coming out of that first turn and is still able to hold. But look at the run that he got off that turn. Just beauty. And at this point, I, I think you're Matthew Weeks. You got to try to think about maybe making that move somewhere on the front straightaway, getting clear. Karen Huggins, if those two can somehow get lined up off of turn three, they're going to make a lot of time. The draft plus the bump drafting, they could get there and they could make the move. Side drafts are very effective in these cars as well. But each lap that that 29's out in front, and now he's going to start trying to break the draft. He feels like the lead's comfortable enough to do so. He's going to swerve it left and right, trying to keep these guys from pulling up at all on the front straightaway. But you can see the 11 still made some progress as pit stops. we got a couple more further back, like Brandon Mier, Trey Holmes, Tyler Steiner, all of them in pit road. Pit cycle happening. We're going to do a short, loose, and loud segment as we haven't been able to do it enough this evening. We're going to give you one more short one before the conclusion of the Dundies 250 here on Twitch.tv.
Coming back in now. Thank you, Black Sheep, for redeeming a loose and loud segment. As promised, we have brought it to you paid and full. 
Again, 11 laps to go. Kyle Munson in the pit. Sean Anderson taking the lead over. Again, caught up in that unfortunate wreck during the last caution, but is now here leader, but has yet to pit. Name, think, go ahead. I was gonna say, I think any of these guys that are staying out at this point, this is all just hoping for caution from here. Maybe having a tire set left, or maybe not. Either side of the strategy, you're gonna have to get a caution for the next three to five laps at the longest. I don't think they can go that long. Three laps at the longest. And these guys are gonna be out on a dry tank, so Sean Anderson, Look to see him come in shortly now. The leader, or what we expect to be your leader, is going to be Ethan Burrell here. Perrin Huggins, though, pretty close on his tail. Those two got the best stops. Elliot Drummond, on the other hand, not a very great stop. Same deal for Nathan Fuller. And they have kind of faded off the leader. Mike DeWalt came out 11th. Still having a pretty good run as he falls outside the top 10. Should be back in it, though, when pit cycles all finish cycling out. And I think we just had our fastest lap of the day. Aaron Huggins with a 53-14. You know what that means, Tom. He's hungry. You know why? Because he's going for the lead right here down at the 8 to the inside of the 37. This could be the battle for the win. 37 is going to fight with all he's got right here. Who wants to clean our most? He's got the preferred line here, too. You can see he oh, made the outside work. Chris now Cross. he tries to break the draft. Got a little crisscross, make you jump. Ethan Burrell hanging on by a thread. Looks like just waiting on Sean Anderson and Nick Wood. They have yet to pit. Just curious on when that will be. Because Ethan Burrell and Parent Huggins are right there. Oh, and Huggins hit the wall coming out of turn three. That might have just cost him the race. Sweet baby Jesus. Wow, that He's was not what I expected to see. Slam the wall. Does not take much to upset these cars, and yeah, that little hit could cost him quite a bit. We had a little bit three wide. Homer, they couldn't find where it was, but I, I don't think he's done fighting yet. As fast as he is, I think he can make up a little bit of damage he might have suffered right there. But if you're the 47 of Ethan Burrell, I think you know he's got him on his toes, and if you're that eight, he knows he's using up his stuff. And he's got to try to oh yeah, out of way by here as soon as he can. Sean Anderson, when is this young man going to pit? And now is the time. So he is going to hand the guard, or the lead, I should say, over to Ethan Burrell, and Perrin Huggins will battle it out. Weeks and Drummond about two seconds back from this action. As we have eight laps to go here at Pocono Raceway for the Dundies 250. Battle and the showdown so far is between Huggins and Burrell. Can Weeks stick his nose in where the sun don't shine? Can Elliot Drummond come back and make this a game again or a race? As you can see him off to the distance at the end of the frame there. Anything can happen here in the closing laps, anything. Yeah, I really like that strategy call actually from Sean Anderson. You know, you gotta try to find find a way to make a bad day good. These might work out if we were to somehow get a caution here before we take the white flag and this race is official. It'd be very interesting to see who has a set of tires left, but it's looking to me as the eight gets loose again, I'm thinking he might have used his stuff up. I think he really needs to get by that first time he got there. And if you're the 37 now, it's about doing all the little things right. And this is one of them right here. Breaking the draft. Don't give him any extra help on those long straightaways. The further he falls back, the better chance you're going to have at winning this thing with seven laps to go. And all of a sudden, the eight is really fading. Yeah, the eight is falling off. And that is unfortunate. So is Matthew Weeks. He got loose off the of turn one. Something fierce. Elliot Drummond right there. Nate Fuller a couple seconds back from them. But this is Ethan Burrell's race to lose. Looks like the nine of Trey Holmes may have made a little mistake. He's going to get past through. We got one smoke in here. Just a little bit of a slid tire. No harm, no foul, but that's certainly going to catch the attention. And speaking of back here, looks like the 40 just tagged the wall. Coming out of the tunnel turn, he was able to keep it together as well. So you got a couple of side-by-side -side battles. That is not... What Ethan Burrell wants to hear in his ear right now, he is looking to see that white flag because he knows that that will mean no more cautions, but we are going to have to go around this place five more times for that to be the case. And 
just when you think he's gone the eight he's gonna try to hang around that three four tenths of a second mark yeah six laps to go it has really become a two-man race between Ethan Burrell and Perrin Huggins. Alec Huggins slapping the wall a couple laps ago. You're just joining us. Has kind of taken the wind out of his sail, but he's trying to make something of it. Five laps to go with the Dundee's 250. He really is too, Tom. He closed it back up there. Not quite a tent, but with only two to three tents. Even hundredth of a second is a big gap to start to close up. The problem is, the closer he gets, we've talked about it all night, but he's going to be loaded on older tires as he maybe just kisses the outside wall. It's that dirty air. He's running the same line as the 37, and it's just going to be so hard to get the front end to stick. He doesn't have as much downforce, and he's going to have to probably find a different line or hope that the 37 slips up out of four where he can get that big drop down the front straight away. And as you can see, Ethan Burrell has a perfect line through the tunnel turn going into three. And that's just so hard to beat. It looks like Huggins gets a good run off of three. But Burrell is just making him work for everything. Four laps to go now for the conclusion of the Dundee 250. Who is going to get the bushiest beaver award? Guy that is not too happy right now. It's not going to be John Cutlip. He finds himself 20th down, 17 more he started. All because of that strategy call. I'm not sure what exactly was going on again. Maybe he thought he was going to get another push. Either way, it didn't work out. And that handed the lead over to the 37 of Ethan Burrell. And he's not really looked back since then. Had to battle it out a little bit with Drummond for a little while, but he found his way back to the front. And nonetheless, Perrin Huggins is not going to go out without a fight here. But as we come to three to go, he just looks like he's struggling too much behind. Yeah, and it looks like Drummond and Weeks have nothing for them as well, as they're about three seconds back, but nothing. No say does three and four. Ethan Burrell and Perrin Hawkins, three to go. This is their show. Well, the road course coming up next week. How big would a win at the Tricky Triangle be for Ethan Burrell? Add his name to list, and correct me if I'm wrong, I'm assuming that the way the playoffs work here is a win in the game. Even if it's not, though, it's still going to certainly help his point standings here tonight. He's going to have to go around at least one more time. A little bit of lap traffic here, though, Tom. This can get a little sketchy. It is going to. With Mark Holloway and Michael Menchaka, you can bet on it. But they move out of the way politely. Old Toyota Camry's coming around with two to go. Ethan Burrell right now sits 17th in points. I do not believe you're eligible for the playoffs. You have to make at least 15 or 16 starts on the season. So you literally have to be here most of the year. You can only take like three provisionals. So he is not playoff eligible, but a win would definitely do him some justice going into 2024. He may not be playoff eligible right now, but he is certainly looking like he might be victory lane eligible. Gonna have to bring this thing around. He's gonna have one and a half laps to go here as he works his way through the tunnel turn. The aid of Perrin Huggins at this point. He might think about one last ditch effort if he can get within two tenths of a second. He does seem to be a little better through the tunnel turn, I will say that, but yeah. three and one, I just think the 37's got too big of a lead for him to close it up. Ethan Burrell getting his first stage win two weeks ago at Dolly Parton's Music City 200 at Nashville Super Speedway. He leads us down for the final lap of the Dundee's 250. Does Perrin Huggins have anything for him at all? He might, he's certainly trying to close it up here, but man, turn one, it's his worst turn. He's got to really dig deep and find something here. Gets tight, almost into the wall. That might finish his chances up, but he's going to follow the draft. The 37 tries to break it. Tom, lead up home here. He's going to have one more shot at it down into turn three. Yeah, Ethan Burrell coming through the tunnel. Turn there, Hawkins. About .29 seconds behind him. Gets a little slippery coming out of two. Ethan Burrell leading us down for the final time. Hawkins 
doing everything he can. He's going to hit the wall, and he does. Trying to ride the rail Chastain style for your winner of the Dundee's 250 is number 37, Ethan Burrell. Perrin Huggins coming home in second. Matthew Weeks in third. Elliot Drummond in fourth. Nathan Fuller in fifth. Final stand is continuing to come down. Nicely done for Ethan Burrell. Yeah. Good job here tonight. Brandon Meyer, Kyle Munson, Mike DeWalt, Trey Holmes, and Jeremy Beal, your top 10. Congratulations to Ethan Burrell getting his first victory of the season and first ever for the Gears Cup Series. We're happy to have him. And as you can see, the persistence pays off. Persevering tonight, your winner, the Dundies 250, Ethan Burrell. We'll let him celebrate. We'll try to get some interviews lined up here for your post-race show. Again, thank you for watching the Horseboat channel on Twitch.tv. We will be right back. All right, as we are back here on the Horseboat Channel with our winner, number 37, Ethan Burrell, getting victory number one. Perseverance paying off for you. Good, sir. Congratulations on the first, I would assume, of many here at the Gears Cup Series. Uh, but congratulations, Ethan. How how are you feeling right now? What's going through your mind? Oh, man, was, I'm ecstatic. I, that was awesome. Uh, I was I was quick all night. Um I usually don't don't necessarily like or Pocono's not high on my list, I guess, but 
I, I found some good speed and, and just made that two tire call in the last stop and man I was barely able to hold off Perrin though he was he was flying and I got a little bit physical throwing blocks and oh yeah yeah it was it was awesome man Austin you mentioned somebody taking two tires and it was Ethan Burrell he was the man that took two tires tonight and won the race your call I would imagine was was the one that Burrell made Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, I wanna, go I was ahead. Gonna say, let me just cut in for just a second. Yeah. I guess that would explain why we saw you two come out so early. But did you have any practice with the two tire strategy, or was it just kind of a split second decision? And how hard was that thing to handle? Uh, no, it was just split second. Um, I just figured that you know those top couple guys. I was right inside the top five there. And I I just. I didn't think I could pass those guys on equal tires. I, I had to try something and um, yeah, taking the two to get the track position. And uh, yeah, man, it was, it was tough. It, uh, it was really hard to turn the first few laps and then it started getting really, really loose and in turns uh, one and three, but I was just barely able to hang on, man. It was, uh, it was well worth the gamble. Well, they do say loose is fast and you did a heck of a job there at the end, holding off a very fast eight car as well. Back to you, Tom. Yeah, thank you, Austin and Ethan. Congratulations, man. Is there anybody you want to show some love to or give a shout-out? Yeah, just shout-out you guys for, for putting on the broadcast. I know you, uh, Tom, uh, you, you told me the last couple of weeks, you know, you're expecting me to get get it done, and uh, I didn't expect it to come this quick. But, uh, yeah, just props to you, man, and, and everybody for uh, putting this on, all the all the race admin and everything. It was uh, It was a fun night. Well, thank you very much for the love. I will pass that on to the admin team as well. Ethan Burrell, you are the Dundies 250 winner. Congratulations. And, again, first of the, hopefully the first of many. Thanks, man. And that's going to wrap it up here tonight for the Gears Cup Series. Again, I am Tom Torrey with a special guest, Austin Green. Again, Austin, if you would like here, give a shout-out for your channel and what you do uh, for your nights. I know that you do multiple, uh, but the main one that you do, uh, go ahead and give a shout-out. Well, uh, pretty much we, we started on Twitch, but now uh, the only thing that really stick to besides coming over here with you is Ghost Racing Network on YouTube. So go check it out. We're trying to get to 1,000 subs, just about at 800 now, but... Uh, do a heck of a job over here, Tom. So the pleasure is all on this side of the table. Thanks for having me here tonight. Yeah, and hope to see you again here soon for the upcoming races. Again, thank you, for Austin Green, for joining us. And thank you, the viewers at home, for hanging out with me tonight. I am Tom Torrey, along with Austin Green, wishing you a good night and have a wonderful weekend.